Hello everyone. If we shine a laser beam through a single slit, one narrow slit, can we get an interference pattern? No, right? One slit, one light wave. How can a light wave interfere with itself, right? Surprise, we get an interference pattern. Well, a single slit is not a point source. It has a slit width B. So it's a continuous line of wave sources. And we get a light rate coming out from each point in the slit. All these rays are going to interfere with one another to give us the single slit interference pattern. So we have a single slit here. We have a screen here. What do we get uh, right in front of the slit at point P where theta is zero? Well, that depends on the outcome of the superposition of all these light waves. There are many, many, many light waves, but for convenience, I'm going to highlight the one uh, from the edge of the slit here. I'll call it ray A. Uh, the one from the bottom of the slit, the other edge of the slit, I'm going to call it ray C. And the one coming up from the middle of the slit, I'm going to call it ray B. Since that theta is equal to zero, there is no path difference among all these rays. So all of them are going to arrive in phase at the destination point P. So if this is A, B will arrive in phase with A, and so will C. And in fact, all these rays are going to arrive in phase. You can't get more constructive than this. That's why the maximum intensity for the single slit diffraction pattern is going to peak at theta is equal to zero. When we move away from theta is equal to zero, the intensity is going to drop, right? Because all these rays are not going to arrive in phase at the destination point P. There is a path difference of B sine theta between the blue ray and the green ray. There is also a path difference of half B sine theta between a ray, uh, the blue ray and the red ray. So if this is ray A arriving at the destination, ray C will arrive uh, with, a, with a lag. And ray B will be right at the middle here. To remind you, uh, these are not the only three rays arriving at the destination point P. All these rays are going to arrive at destination point P. But it's obvious that the outcome of the superposition of all these rays will be something that is uh, less strong than what we had at theta is equal to zero. Because the rays now no longer arrive in phase, they are not stacked up exactly. That's why the intensity of the interference pattern, it peaks here at theta is equal to zero, and then it starts to decrease as we move away. Now, can we get a complete destructive interference? That means can all these waves superpose to give us exactly zero? The answer is yes. And the first time it happens is when B sine theta is equals to one lambda. So if wave A arrives at the destination like this, wave B is going to arrive half a cycle later because um, wave B has a path difference of half a lambda with respect to A. And where would wave C be? Wave C will be here. Since wave C has a path difference of one lambda compared to A. Now remember, these are not the only three rays. There are still all these, right? So what's the outcome of the superposition of all these rays? Uh, it looks rather complicated, but do realize that A and B are in antiphase. So A and B will cancel each other out. And the next ray just below A will cancel with the next ray just below B. Because they also have a path difference of half a lambda. So this one cancels this one, this one cancels out this one. This one cancels out this one, this one cancels out this one, and so on. 
do you realize that the waves from the top half of the slit is going to cancel out the waves coming out from the bottom half of the slit? So when wave A arrives in phase with wave C at the destination, this is actually the time when, when the waves from the entire slit are going to undergo complete destructive interference. If you are willing to think hard about it, you can work out that actually um, the complete destructive interference occur whenever the path difference is equal to integer number of wavelengths. But for the H2 syllabus, all that you are required to know is that the first destructive interference occurs at the first minimum angle, I'll call it theta 1, uh, such that B sine theta 1 is lambda. So you're required to know that the peak intensity occurs at theta is equal to 0. This is when all the waves arrive in phase, remember, and the intensity drops as the waves no longer arrive in phase. And a complete destructive interference occurs at the, at the so-called first minimum angle, uh, where the angle is actually the sine inverse of lambda over B. Actually, in practice, uh, we know that most of the energy is concentrated within this so-called uh, central maximum. So whatever lies beyond the first minimum angle uh, is beyond the syllabus. Do realize that the narrower the slit, the bigger the first minimum angle. For example, if I half the slit width, if I half B, then the first minimum angle is going to be doubled from here to here. And the diffraction pattern will become wider and flatter. So the narrower the slit, the more diffracted the beam will be. It's a bit counterintuitive, but you have to remind yourself light is a wave here. All right, that's all. Ata.